Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to the third lecture of designing and implementation of this pipeline code. So in today's lecture, we are going, uh, in previous lecture, we have covered the topic how we are going to design a fetch cycle for the pipeline code version. And in today's video, we are going to implement the decode cycle of the pipeline version. So as uh, our normal routine, we are going to first discuss about a little bit of the theory, and then we will move towards the work coding part. So let's start with the decode cycle part. So uh, uh, as you can see here that I've shown the architecture diagram that what will be the, which modules are going to be a part of a decode cycle part and what signals will be uh, as a use as an input and as a output and what registers values we are going to be used. So firstly, we are going to the modules which are going to be integrated in a decode cycle part are first is the control unit. Definitely, it is a combination file of the ALU decoder and main decoder. Either you can have a control top file or you can have both separate units as well. So you can initiate both of them. And the second will be the register file. And the third will be the extender, which used to extend the in, uh, immediate value to the 32 bits value. And fourth, I have discussed, uh, mentioned the decode stage registers. As previously, I stated that we are going to implement the registers outside the main decode uh, individual cycle part uh, uh, files. But... Uh, uh, I think let's uh, keep our uh, implementation as a uh, synchronous. So as we have done in previous, that we have in, uh, designed or uh, in, integrate the registers into the fetch cycle uh, top modules. So in the same way, we are going to integrate the registers in the decode cycle. As well. So this is the top diagram. As you can see here, that the left hand the uh, left hand side I have the inputs, and on the right hand side I have the outputs, and as well the inputs from other uh, coming from the other stages, right? So here we can see that instruction D, PCD, and P, uh, PC plus 4D are the output of the fetch cycle and getting input as behaving as input to the decode cycle. And th these are the some internal signals we have going to be connect internally. So we don't have to, uh, uh, we are going to be mentioned them in the interim wires. And here you can see that this is a register which have been used as the output of the decode cycle in which the values have been renamed from D uh, subscript to the E subscript, which shows that from these are the signals from up decode cycle and these are the signals are used into the execution cycle, right? So these are all the control signals and this uh, uh, sources values of RD1, RD2, PC value, RD2, the destination address, immediate and PC plus four, etc. On the right hand side, you can see that I've put our two X signal uh, arrows here, your two X, symbols here, the main reason because these are not the inputs of the decode cycle. These are the inputs which we have used into the fetch cycle. So we don't have to uh, mention them as the input towards the, in the decode cycle. Well, that's why I have mentioned the X here that these are not the inputs and not the outputs. The uh, remaining three inputs into the decode cycle part are will be the red right signal, which is coming from the right back stage. The view means that uh, it is coming from the right back stage. In the same way, as you can see here, the two main signals that RDW destination uh, value, register value, address, which is also coming from the right back stage and also the result is coming from the right back stage. The reason these are signals are coming from the right back stage, as we have mentioned that uh, already know that in pipeline, we have divided our execution in uh, smaller chunks. So definitely when I want to uh, write back the data for the following session, which have been executed from the last four cycles. So I need the correct register wise signal for that uh, value and the destination register and where is the result which has been generated from uh, for that instruction. So these are the basic uh, overview of what the, will be the decode cycle uh, top file we will, will be look at and what will be the inputs and outputs. So let's go move to the uh, uh, coding part without any further delay. So as I've already opened my VS Code Studio and all the files have been uh, available in here, source folder. So all I have to do is just to make a new uh, file with the as we have meant, uh, make a new file with the fetch cycle dot top file. So we are going to just make a new file for our decode cycle dot v. Okay, so just let me open this so I can uh, copy my licensing part on the top of the file. Okay, as includes, includes, so definitely I know which files I have to include here. Uh, we have already know that I have to include the control unit top as mentioned here. So control unit top dot we will be included and my other file will be included will be the register file so you can see a register file name is here register underscore file dot b and the third file was my extender file okay right now i uh, 
including this file on individual modules so we can have a testing uh, we can test them uh, separately but when we are going to combine them into a top file so then we don't need to include them in uh, individual top file so we are going to just include them in the top file as, uh, in the main top file so that is the future scope okay so let's start with our module declaration so module is decode I guess one per cycle have decode file cycle so let's make it decode cycle right Inputs are main view, you know, that block and reset are our default inputs. So we are going to mention them. And okay, let's see if I can keep this back to back. So it's easy to. Okay. I hope these uh, things are visible for now because I need an input signal so I can uh, mention them here uh, very quickly. So instruction D and PCD, but PC plus. Body, reg write W and R D W and W. Okay, these were my inputs. So I guess these are all I've needed for now. Okay, now I can let's make okay. These are the inputs and output we have been mentioned. So Let's start with our declaring IO ports. Okay, so first will be my input will be the clock and the reset. Both are the signal uh, signal uh, bit inputs. And also I know that my reg right signal is also a one bit signal, right? Then other inputs will be of 32 bits as we know that. So the result will be instruction D by PC my PC plus 4D. Okay, my RD. Okay, sorry, my RD. My result W. These are all the inputs of 32 bits. And I forget. One input will be of my 5 bits because uh, the destination registers is always a 5 bit value. So RD will be a 5 bit value, right? Uh, as we have declared the inputs and IO, then we use what we do that we declare the interim wires. Okay, so for that again, I need uh, my coding. What will be the okay? Let's uh, we will do that uh, later. So let's first initiate the modules. Okay, so first control unit. Let me open the control unit file top. Uh, other we have extension and the register these are open control and i'm just going to copy it and simply i'm going to paste it control unit job and that's name is the control okay of course i have a reg right signal i have my digit source really source Definitely, you guys must be familiar with it, so that's why I'm not going to talk much here. Uh, just have to do it quickly. Okay, after control, let's call us our register file here. I'm going to name it as an RF file. We have a block. We have a reset. White enable. WD3 enable. The reason I'm just uh, mentioning the signals that we are going to connect them uh, later on. So that's why just uh, initiating the module quickly. So I can know which interim wires I have to declare to connect all of these together. Okay, after register file, I need a sign extension. Okay, 
with sign extension and stop mode to the game controls. Okay, so we are done with our module initiation. So let's just connect some of the signals which we know when we're going to connect directly. The clock will be connected directly. The reset will be connected uh, directly with our ports. Okay, write enable fee. So we have known that the write enable fee should be connected with our wrench, right? W because it is a signal coming from the right back state, right? WD3 is our result. So definitely the result is also coming from the right back state. So W result will be connected to the WD3 port directly. A3 is our destination register. So RDW is our destination register. So RDW will be connected to us. A3. Okay. Now for all the images and uh, instruction, definitely we are going to use our instruction D. So instruction V will be used at the output. Uh, as we know that output is of how many bits. Okay, now I'm going to maximize it. That output is 0 to 6 bits of the instruction D. So definitely I'm going to just connect instruction D. 6 to zero bits here quickly okay reg right is one of the signal which is an output here right so definitely i have to mention a signal here to reg right i'm going to put a subscript of d here as mentioned already that reg right d so definitely it can pass out to other stages and uh, it can be connected come back from the right back side. so first of the wire is my reg right d Okay, then immediate source. So let's see what does the immediate source do. That immediate source is directly connected with our extension. So, oh, sorry, immediate source D will directly be connected with our extension immediate source D, right? And immediate source signal will be of two bits. So let's uh, declare it here wire one colon zero. Okay, we have immediate source connected. Then we have ALU source. So let's see, oh, ALU source is my output and then going towards the execution part. So ALU source D will be my another wire. Okay, declare as a D. Okay, sorry, I forgot to see that ALU source D is a single bit signal, right? So all I have to do is just to control C and control V there. Then we have a memrise signal. So definitely memrise signal will also be going to the execution stage. So memrise D and control C, control D. And I just want control C and control D here. Right as well. Okay, the result source. So we can see the result source is also going. Uh, source D is a two-bit signal which is going directly towards uh, execution stage, right? So result source. Okay, I have so there's also one bit signal here. Uh, the reason the signals have two bits there is because uh, there are some external uh, extra part has been included in the architecture as we have only implemented till R type in our previous single cycle. So that's why the signals here are of single bit. So you don't have to worry about it, right? Okay, the branch D will be also going to branch execution. So branch, just naming as D and also mentioned here. Okay, now we move towards the function three. Function three, as we know, that this is a 12 to 14 bits of our instruction D bits. So all I have to do is con connect the instruction D 14 till 12 bits here. Okay, so I've connected 12 till 14. And for the function seven, we have only the 38 bit of the instruction D. So simply we are going to connect that as well. Okay. I think that function C is the Okay, function seven is a seven bit signal here, but as we have mentioned here that it is a 31, so I have to mention it from 31 till if we go back 31, 32, 26.5. Okay, I guess it is from 25 till 31. Uh, let's move to our control signal if I remember correctly. I just have to see my function seven is from 25 till 31, right? So 
yes just from 25 till 31 then we can move to the alu control is will be an output signal for three bits so definitely it will be a uh, is not used here anywhere so let's see what is a three bit signal control c and we are going to declare the interim wire two bit zero control c okay all of i guess interim wires have been declared here okay now uh, a1 a2 and all these things have been made so for the a1 i know that instruction d15 19 till 15 And same for A2, my bits uh, value will be from 24 to 20. 24 for 20. RD1 and RD2 will be the new output ports. So definitely have to mention uh, declare them as the RD1, D, and RD1 mentioned at any wires. So just for the sake of simplicity, we are going to have subscript of D, which shows that these are the signals of the D4 stage. Right, so just copy one of it, and these are will be the entire wires as well, and these will be the thirty-two bit value wires, right? Comma control B, so just make it. Up. So keeping the practice by mentioning the wires and registers on the top will be good practice, so that we don't have any errors occurring there. And then the input immediate of is at from seven till thirty-one, so definitely I'm just going to. Office input as a 31 till 7. I hope that this is a yeah, 0 so 31. So let's keep it 0 to 31. An immediate extension will be my output. So control C and mention him as a D subscript. And definitely this will also be a going to be a 32 bit wire. So I guess these are all the connections we have completed. Uh, on from our side and all our parts have been modules have been connected together now the last thing we have to do is that we have to define this register uh, so we can just map the input d through it and just pass it to the outputs okay as you can see that on the top i just forget to mention the output ports we haven't defined any output ports because these will be the outputs of the register so we will describe them later so just now start with register uh, declaration of interim registers right so let's start quickly with the uh, first register will be my all the control signals uh, except for the images source will be my registers so just quickly i just have to what i can do is on copies these and mention it here and have a subscript of R in them. Having a subscript of R means that they are the decode state registers. Okay, all of them are single bits. And the other I have is my ALU control D. So just copy it and paste it here and then name it as register of subscript putting R well, right so these are the internal registers of uh, the control signals now we have to describe the register for rd1 and rd2 and the immediate extension so just copying that as well from wire and mentioning them here as a okay in here definitely the registered numbers are increasing subscripts are subscripts are and we have a subscript of r Okay, RD1, RD2 have been done immediately. Okay, now you can see that these some inputs are also getting registered by without any using of it. Like our PC is just getting input uh, in, into the decode cycle and just getting as an output from the PC without any for, uh, working on it. And same is going with our uh, PC4D. And RD is also uh, one of the register which we have to place as an output. So for here, I guess, I'm going to make a new register of five bits, which will be RDR. Can I let's make an underscore D as well? So RDDR is my one of the registers which will I'm using directly from instruction. It will be mapped into it from seven to eleven. Okay, immediate uh, have been done. Now I have to mention two more registers of PCD and PC plus four D. So I'm mentioning them separately. Yes. 
So PC D underscore R and PC plus four D underscore R, right? So these are the registers we have been mentioned. Uh, let's just check it out that all of mentioned registers have been put it out. So here are one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. There will be a total thirteen number of registers to declare. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, I guess I forget one. Uh, PCD. Yeah, I guess I guess PCD. One. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right, correct. 1, 2, 3. Okay, here is a jump signal as well that we have been implemented a jump. So definitely I'm going to ignore that. So I guess my all of the registers have been declared here. Now our we have to implement our register logic. I'm going to get a little bit of fast so that we can move. Okay, so I guess just dropping a little. Okay, so just for the uh, to uh, make the video a little bit of short, so I've just declared the register from it. initially you initialize them with zero. Now I'm just going to map the signals correctly on them. So what I have to do is I just have to copy the signals name and map them together or this or by removing the subscript of R. You can see that by doing this, my uh, coding uh, by keeping the name mostly the same uh, help us to map them easily without any hurdle. If I keep the names differently, so I have to just change them a lot of time in that. So naming con uh, convention plays a vital role in coding. So let's do it a little bit of trick. What I can do, I can do this part as well. Okay, I guess R D D R definitely not going to help. Okay, here I cannot do that because these are not the output signal, right? R D one D is the output wire, I guess. Okay, R D one D is output R D two meter. Okay, for the R D P C R D D as we already know that for P C uh, R D D we have seven to eleven bits of our instruction. So what I'm going to do is copy the instruction D and going to place it here. So it will be 11 till 7, I guess. Uh, let's confirm it again. Yeah, it's from 7 till 11. And PCDR is my register. So the input of PCD will become connected back to this. And PC plus 4D will be connected as the input. These are my inputs, so I definitely have connected them directly. Right, so these are the register signals. Now I have we have to mention our assign statements, output assign statements. So right. Okay, so now I'm going to just use map all of these registers to my assign output statement and how we can do that, so assign, uh, making signal same. Okay, now I just have to mention the subscript of E here, right? So the, these ER will be mapped to directly here. So this will be a little bit of time. Okay, I'm just reminding you that definitely we have not declared any of the offense as an output, so we have to do that as well. Let's first do this and then we can do that.
Yes, I need this. Let me again. The new guys must be bored by looking at this, so I prefer that we keep on practicing parallelly. So that the chances of error can be minimized. Okay, this should be PC, right? So I guess we are done with here the assigned statement. Now I just have to mention these as the output signals quickly. Right, right, E. Okay, so we are done with the declaration of our output post, but still we have to mention the other output here. So just making our life easy, going to copy that and replacing the rest with our outputs and changing the subscript to E. This is the fastest way we can do that. Okay, so this is our final again. Okay, that's it. So you can see here that we have completed our decode top module that we have already mentioned all the inputs and outputs posts. We have declared input and output here. Also in tearing wires, the registers which we are going to use, the modules which we have been uh, using and have con uh, connect them uh, to, to each other. And here is our register logic. And we have also mapped in output posts of our decode state to the registers. And then we have mapped these registers to our output assigned posts, right? So this is all for the RTL design uh, file. Uh, today I'm not going to make a test bench for it. So I'm giving this, this task of making a test bench and verifying this design is up to you. So you have to make a test bench for it and you have to verify it and see if there are some errors or not or you can uh, simulate it successfully. So this is all for the decode cycle. We will be having our next video on execution cycle, inshallah. So stay tuned for it. And that is all for today. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.